Hi, this is Jeremy Jansen, and I'd like to welcome you to the September 2010 issue of Reason Wizardry. This month we're going to continue on with Reason 5 and some of its unique new features and how to put them best to use. This time around we're going to be looking more in depth at sampling. One of the most contentious issues there's always been with Reason is VST support. Obviously Reason does not support VST and I wouldn't personally ever expect it to in the future. But with the advent of sampling in Reason 5, I found a really quick and powerful workflow for sampling VSTs into Reason with a minimum amount of hassle. So the first thing I'm going to do is show you how to set up the necessary routing you're going to need in order to get VSTs into Reason and then we're going to record some different VST instruments and you'll get to keep the patch sets and samples to use in your tracks or continue working with. Before I get into the details of this VST recording technique, I should mention that I'm going to be going through this technique on PC. So if you own a Mac, you're not going to be able to follow along exactly. However, there is a program that enables Mac users to do pretty much the same thing. And it's been around for a while. And actually, it's a well-established technique of sampling VST instruments. It's a program called Soundflower. I have tried it myself, and it does work. Unfortunately, I can't show you exactly how it works because my Mac isn't set up for screencasting at this time. Basically, you'll want to go through pretty much the same route of getting audio into Reason from your VST or AU host. If you download Soundflower and you have problems with it, send me off an email and hopefully I can get you going pretty quick. The other reason that I'm focusing on the PC technique is that up till now, I wasn't aware of any way to do this on PC. Soundflower is fairly popular, but the program that I've found to do this on PC is quite obscure and I wasn't aware of it and I hadn't read anything about it. So this is something that's fairly new to me and I think will be new to the Reason community in terms of how to sample VST sounds into Reason easily. All right, so the first thing we need to do to get started is install the ASIO multi-client. The URL is now at the bottom of your screen. It's a very simple program to install, just run the installer. And then the important part is starting up Reason, going to Preferences, Audio, and switching it from your normal so sound card driver to the ASIO client. Okay, now you're going to need to do that in your VST host as well whatever you're planning on using to load the VST instruments to sample. In my case, I'm using Traction, and I can't show you where to go in there to change it specifically. If I switch to settings, uh, my voice will actually cut out. So you just need to go into your preferences for whatever VST host that you're using and switch that over to the ASIO client. Now you'll notice once you're running a program with the ASIO client, you'll get a taskbar pop up like this with the ASIO multi-server. So you can see here that I'm running Traction and Reason at the same time, and they're both using the ASIO driver. Right here, you'll want to select which sound card you're actually outputting to if you have multiple sound cards. Otherwise, it'll just default to whichever one you're using. So once you've set both Reason and your VST host to the ASIO client, 
it's very important to start reason first. If I start up traction and then I start up reason afterwards, it'll assume that I want to use rewire and it'll rewire reason into traction. I don't want that because you won't be able to sample anything into reason if it's being used in rewire mode. So you can tell for sure by just looking up at this line and if you're in rewire mode, it'll say so. Otherwise, it should say ASIO client. So once you think that you've got both of them up and running at the same time and all looks good, it's time to quickly test things out. And to do that, we just wanna make sure that we can get audio output from both programs. So I will just call up uh, Thor patch here in Reason. And obviously we have audio there, so I'll remove that. And now I'll just switch over to Traction. And I've loaded up this Beast VST instrument. And I'll turn on audio input for that track and play a note. So as you can tell, we've got both our VST host and Reason outputting audio at the same time, not in rewire mode. So we should have no trouble sampling from the VST host into Reason. Because if we flip back, you'll see when I play a note on the Beast, look at our audio inputs right here. So we have audio entering Reason, and that means we'll be able to run it through our sampling input. And that's what we're going to do next. All right, so now that we've got the ASIO multi-server running, let's start sampling. I've loaded up a VST host here, it's Traction. Uh, you can use whatever you like, Cubase or Live. This is just, uh, for my limited VST use right now, this is what I tend to use. I've loaded up two instruments to sample, and the first one we're going to use is Alchemy. And now I'll just open up that interface. You can see I've loaded up a pad here from our viral outbreak library in Alchemy. Now, as usual, I'm going to recommend that you turn off any delay or reverb before you sample. Okay, so that's Autumn Wings, so let's sample that. So now that we've got the right VST instrument loaded, let's just check out our sampling input here in Reason. If you play a note, you'll see immediately which input the VST instrument is being sent to. So in this case, it's inputs five and six. So we need to send those to the sampling input. Now we've got our sampling set up pretty much good to go. Uh, one thing to be aware of is definitely do not push the sample monitoring or you're going to get some nasty feedback. So now I'm going to sample our first note at C3. Okay, now to sample another note, I need to create another zone. So we'll add zone, and now we will sample C2. Okay, and one more. We'll sample C4.
Okay, now we need to map these in NNXT by setting the root nodes correctly. So sample one is C3, sample two is C2, and sample three is C4. And now we can use the auto map function. And there we are. Now keep in mind that MIDI is being sent both to traction and to reason. So we'll want to turn off the MIDI input on Alchemy before we play some notes to test our NNXT. little bit of uh, amp envelope release would be helpful. So of course you could use many more samples, but for some applications, one, two, three samples uh, around that number is gonna be just fine, especially for synthetic instruments like pads and synth sounds. If you're recording something that's meant to sound realistic, typically you're gonna wanna use quite a bit more than three samples in your multi-sample set. All right, let's continue on and sample something else from Viral Outbreak, uh, Alchemy. How about from the Guitars folder? This is a patch called Magic Hat. Let's hear how that sounds. Okay, so it's a nice synthetic guitar. So the first thing we'll wanna do as usual is turn off the delay and the reverb. Sounds okay right now. Okay. So now let's open Reason and get to sampling. You can see I've already created some zones here. I've created three zones for each octave. We're going to sample the same way I sampled Viral Outbreak and some of our other sample products, which is C, E, and G sharp for every octave. I find that that three notes per octave scheme works really well as a balance between resource consumption and quality. All right, let's get started. Okay, there we have our six notes. Now we just need to assign them the correct root notes. We've got C, E2, G sharp 2, C3, E3, G sharp 3. Now I've actually turned off this NNXT from currently receiving notes. So I'm gonna turn that back on and turn off our note input to Alchemy. Now all we need to do is auto map and then we can demo our new sound set. There it is. Uh. 
So it sounds pretty good. If you go outside the two octave range, it's going to get progressively worse, but it still sounds okay, even down to, say, C1. Or C5. Now, why not try some unique reason effects and let's add on some unison. And some delay. All right, so that's a really nice patch that we created in quite a hurry, direct from alchemy into reason. Okay, so now we're going to continue with sampling, and this time we're going to sample the microtonic VST instrument that uh, actually has a little bit of a reason connection, if you weren't aware. Uh, I believe that its author, Magnus, uh, hope I have that name right, uh, created the Maelstrom synth in Reason as well. Okay, so Microtonic is just uh, a really nice and simple and good sounding drum machine with many, many, many preset kits and patterns. So it's an excellent choice to sample into Kong. So that's exactly what we're going to do. I, I've already loaded up a kit here and I'll let you hear it. So it's got eight elements and now we will open up Reason and do our sampling. All right, here we go with the first hit. You'll notice that even though there's some space before each hit happens, that actually Reason is smart enough to get rid of that empty space before the sample and it starts right when the actual sound starts. So we don't need to go in there and edit it out. So actually the last two hits are identical, but we'll leave those as is. So now, as before, we need to turn off the MIDI input in traction, and then we can addition our new Kong drum kit. So we've got a little bit of an issue here on hits four and five. There's quite a bit of delay, and that tells me that Reason didn't figure out and get rid of the empty space before the sample, so we're going to have to remove that on our own. So let's bring up the tool window. Find the correct samples here. Okay, it's samples 7 and 8. So we'll open those up. 
and try to crop them as best we can. And that sounds great to me now. So with this new technique of routing sound into Reason for sampling through the multi-ASIO driver, you get a lot of options for really quick sampling. If you have a lot of VST instruments and there's some particular sounds that you like, you can just go in and grab them really quick. Now, it's not to say that the previous technique that we went through in the, I believe it was the February 2010 issue of using Extreme Sample Converter to create sample sets for use in Reason. It's not to say that that's obsolete now. I would still use that technique if you wanted to create large multi-sample sets. And if you're really concerned about quality, then you're going to want to sample that way, probably still loop in WaveLab using adjustable crossfade. So this is just a much more quick and immediate technique that you can use to very quickly get your VST sounds into reason while you're working on a song without really breaking your workflow. All right, I had planned on wrapping it up there for sampling VST instruments, but I just felt like doing one more using a very unique instrument called Ironhead that's created by Ugo. It's one of the most unique drum synths out there. It has a very digital sound. It's one of the most unique drum synths out there. So it would be great to get some of the kits that it contains into reason for your drum patterns. So you can hear uh, some of the drum hits here. All right, so we're going to sample that. There's actually more than 16 hits in a single kit, so we're not going to sample every one. Just get started here. So let's bring back Reason and get started with drum one. Okay, so we'll leave it at that with 12 unique drum hits from Ironhead. And we'll addition them and turn off the MIDI input in Traction. So there you have it, a nice Ironhead bonus drum kit in Kong. That brings us to the end of the September 2010 issue of Reason Wizardry. Hopefully this issue has inspired you to 
perhaps go out and download some free VST instruments and uh, sample those into Reason's devices and maybe create some crazy drum kits using Kong sampled from all sorts of VSTs. I'd also like to remind everyone that I'm always looking for your feedback on Reason Wizardry issues and especially on new issues. Of course, I'm going to be covering some of the new Reason 5 features as well as Record 1.5 in upcoming issues, but I'd really like to get your thoughts on where to go beyond that. Is there something in terms of older Reason devices or techniques that you're interested in learning more about? If so, it'll only get looked at if you drop me an email and, and let me know why you think that would fit in a future Reason Wizardry issue. As always, I thank you for watching. I thank you for your time. This is Jeremy Jansen. Until next time, cheers.